Kurt Dudley Marling is the author of Preparing the Nation's Teachers to Teach Reading, a manifesto in defense of teacher educators like me. The renowned scholar Marilyn Cochran Smith writes in the introduction to Preparing the Nation's Teachers, although Kurt himself describes his book as polemical, I don't find it so. The book is outspoken and bold, to be sure, and the same critics who attack the positions Kurt attempted to explain in his posts on the literacy leaders listserv described in his introduction to the book will undoubtedly reject and attack his ideas here as well if they ever have the occasion to read them. But polemics are often all ideology and no data, all passion and no reason principles of practice, all opposition and no proposition about alternative approaches and perspectives. Kurt's book isn't like that at all. His propositions are grounded in a consistent research-based and principled theoretical framework for understanding the nature of teaching and learning to read, with many references to highly regarded and well-vetted empirical research and to actual classroom experiences, his own and others, that support and help to generate these propositions. His Oppositions, especially to NCTQ's operating assumptions about reading, teaching reading, and preparing teachers to teach reading, are also grounded in carefully explained and principled theoretical frameworks, which are widely shared by literacy scholars and practitioners around the country and the world. Yeah, Marilyn mentions NCTQ in her uh, little introduction there. So just for the uninitiated, NCTQ is the National Council of Teacher Quality. And it was a creation of the Conservative Fordham Foundation, which uh, a former insider described as an effort to discredit and harass schools of education. So just for the uninitiated, I thought you should know that. Um, there's good re oops, I'm not good at this. There's good reason to believe that the education of children in high poverty schools places overpopulated by black and Hispanic students is plagued by a pedagogy of poverty that focuses on low-level skills to the near exclusion of the engaging high-level curriculum commonly found in higher academic tracks. A society organized by the free market is a lonely, hateful place that is an anathema to caring teachers eager to create respectful, inclusive classrooms. NCTQ's attacks on teacher education are animated in part by the belief that university-based <laughs> reading educators are mostly whole language advocates who eschew the teaching of the fundamentals of reading, like phonics. NCTQ shares this belief with many critics of American education who seem convinced that the emphasis on literature and meaning making in schools of education represents an outright <laughs> rejection of phonics instruction. This anti-phonic stance is seen to be responsible for the poor literacy achievement of American school children compared to children in other countries around the globe. To put the argument more simply, American students are not learning, it's believed, to read as effectively as their peers in other parts of the world, and ultimately, the blame for this situation lies with university-based reading educators who, because of their rejection of explicit phonics instruction, do not adequately prepare teachers to teach reading. However, there's no evidence that phonics has been de-emphasized in schools and classrooms across the country. There is no evidence that reading education in schools of education is dominated by holistic approaches to reading, as many critics have claimed. Meaning-centered approaches like whole language are not antiphonics. Letter sound information is always part of the data readers use to bring sense to reading texts. After all, no one reads with their eyes closed. I want to interject here a personal note that after the 50th time I came back from the grocery store with the wrong item, my wife is now convinced that I do read with my eyes closed. <laughs> it's not true, I just am careless. <laughs> I'm sorry for that. American schools are not failing compared to schools in other countries. David Berliner's analysis of international comparisons clearly shows that American students in relatively affluent schools do very well compared to their peers in other countries. The problem is that students attending schools with higher proportions of students living in poverty do much less well compared both to students in other countries and their peers 
in more affluent schools in this country. The arguments about reading instruction in the U.S. have focused mainly on pedagogy, but the evidence indicates that while pedagogy matters, it will always be insufficient for overcome, overcoming the material effects of poverty. If we're really serious about leaving no child left behind, we must give serious attention to the high levels of poverty among American school children. Reading pedagogy will never be sufficient for overcoming the material effects of poverty. And one final uh, excerpt. Despite its fatal flaws, the NCTQ's claims about how reading is taught in American colleges of education has been readily accepted by pundits and policymakers, no doubt because they already believed that there were serious problems with reading education in the US. And the principal reason is liberal professors of reading education like me.